Okay, I haven't heard any students come on. Can somebody confirm you're there? Hi. Great. I'm here. Great. I'm here. Oh, I just wanted to make sure you guys could hear me and I could hear you. Um, let me get my headphones on and I will uh, get started. Uh, I forgot to mention in the, oops, that's not the one. Here we are. I forgot to mention in the lecture that uh, yesterday, uh, because of a, a problem with Zoom, I was not able to record the meeting, get it, the program of it, and then put it online. So what I did was I put online the, uh, the meeting from last term. And so you'll note the dates are wrong, but everything else was the same, including uh, what we were talking about at the start of the lab, which was, I mean, start of the lecture, which was what we were going to be doing and uh, what we needed to read and the different projects and everything like that. The only difference is, is that uh, this term, I think I discussed two additional slides, which were not on the recording for the lecture. So if you listen to the lecture, you'll get all of the slides we discussed last Tuesday, with the exception of the two last. And uh, I'm afraid you're just going to have to uh, learn that material on your own. I have made uh, my notes available to you. You can take a look at my notes. You can also take a look at the slides. When we get done with the lesson, I'll make the slides available to you. Any question about any of that? I'm still converting the lecture. And that's, oh, you're not seeing this yet. <clears throat> Let me... Uh, Share the screen. <clears throat> so you don't see me when I share the screen, do you? Can you guys see me? Yes, you're on one side of the screen and the other screen is your share. Okay, I'm not saying that I'm, oops, I don't wanna do that. So I guess I need this, all right. I don't know why I brought this up, so uh, I need to blow my nose, so I'm going to get out of the screen. It's not a cold or anything. Whenever the weather changes, my nose runs. It runs in my family, and uh, the weather was actually pretty nice today. Uh, let's see. Um, Cool. I got the screen shared and where do I want? Let's just start here. And that is, uh, we're gonna be discussing lab three, microscope basics. Hopefully you've read the textbook chapter three through the end of the section on compound light uh, microscopy. You also need to read that for uh, lab four on stains, which will be next Tuesday. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the, uh, project, but you should be picking a uh, infectious disease project. About half of you have done so, and I've okayed it, with the exception of one student, I think, who uh, they picked a topic that somebody else had picked, and so they have to pick another topic. Uh, there was also one student who I told them that their topic was too broad, and they had to narrow it. And I think that student has narrowed it, but I'm not gonna look up to be certain about that. Anyways, that's what we're doing in the lab today. So let's clear that and go directly to the lab. 
Chapter three, lab module three, microscope basics. Hmm, that's got this space in there, but not a problem. Uh, read this lab module in the class textbook, chapter three, uh, through the end of the section, compound light microscopy. You will be watching some video clips and there may be some online exercises. There are links in the laboratory exercise, meaning the worksheet. But you're not physically gonna be using a microscope. However, upon completion of this lab module, students should be able to locate and name the parts of a compound microscope, along with describing those parts functions, be able to calculate the total magnification for each objective that is used, know the guidelines for focusing specimens with the object, different objectives, meaning there's the scanning objective, the low objective, the high objective, and the oil immersion objective. And when I say objective, I mean objective lens. And this I'll point out, just a side note here, uh, that students often get confused on the low objective and the high objective. And for that reason, I don't tend to use these terms because the low objective is not the lowest, that's the scanning objective. And the high objective is not the highest. The highest is the oil immersion objective lens. Be able to estimate the size of a specimen when it's seen at the different magnification powers under the microscope and be able to understand the rules for proper microscope use and care. Be able to define the terms associated with the microscope and the terms are given throughout the uh, lab module. You are going to be doing a uh, exercise, a virtual exercise where you will be using a virtual microscope. You'll be doing that online. Memorize the names and functions of these parts of the microscope. The eyepieces or the ocular lenses the objective lenses, and on our microscope, there are four different objective lenses. The stage, that's what you put the slide on top of. And then the stage clip, it holds the slide and then moves it around. Where's number five? Does anyone see number? Oh, there it is. Uh, five is the lever for moving the stage clip around and it can move it I don't know, back and forth as well as up and down, not up and down, uh, back and forth and I don't know, sideways. Um, you can move it up and down, but that doesn't use this lever. That would be using the coarse focus knob, which is number eight and the fine focus knob, which is number nine. That will move the stage up and down. You should also know the iris diaphragm and the lever for the iris diaphragm is number six. An iris diaphragm is sort of like a shutter in a camera and you can open that uh, iris diaphragm so that the shutter is really open wide or you can shut down the shutter so that there's very little space left for light to get through. And we'll talk about the importance of that in a little bit. And connected to the iris diaphragm is the condenser. What the condenser is, it's actually a lens, but it doesn't magnify the image or the light. It just collects the light from the lamp, which is number 12 here and then gives you a cone of light uh, up on the specimen. So that's what the condenser is doing. The iris diaphragm, what it is doing is changing the size of that cone of light that is coming up to the specimen. And generally for best illumination, you wanna have the 
cone of light coming through the slide equal to the size of your objective lens. And that means with the large, not the large, the, the uh, smallest lens, the 4X lens, you want that cone of light to be open. And then for all of the higher objectives like the 10X and the 40X, and lastly the 100X, you wanna shut down that cone of light coming through the specimen. And so with the 100X foil immersion lens, this one here, uh, you wanna have the iris diaphragm just a pinprick, really small. Any question about that? Uh, some other things you should know is there's the switch for turning the lamp on and off. And then there's the rheostat or light intensity dial for turning the light on higher or lower. So there they are there, although it didn't give the name of the lamp, it gave it as a illuminator where the light bulb is. Uh, all the others, I think I gave you the correct way. And that one is correct. It can be called many different things, the lamp, the light, the illuminator. Um, there's something I need to talk about, and that is the objective lens are on a rotating nose piece. And this rotating nose piece can move and that's how you can use the different objective lenses. Are you hearing that noise? A dull rumble or muffled sound? Yes. It's like somebody upstairs has a uh, vacuum cleaner where they turned it on and it got stuck on a carpet and there's nobody there to do anything with the vacuum cleaner. My apology if you can hear that. Uh, rotating nose piece objectives. You need to know this table. That's why it's highlighted in yellow. So as I stated, the lenses, I generally call them just by their power. The 4X lens is called the scanning lens. The 10X lens is called the low power lens or, or objective. The 40X objective or lens is called the high power lens. And the 100X uh, objective is called the oil immersion lens. The total magnification on our microscopes is 10 times the magnification of the objective lens. And so the total magnification is just 10 times the power of the lens. So the 4X lens has a total magnification of 40X times. That means when you're viewing a specimen, it will be enlarged 40 times. Any question about that? Now, let me talk up oh, the uh, lecture. Uh, The lecture Zoom uh, message just finished, and that's why that popped up. Um, on microscopes, and we're talking about compound microscopes, the total magnification is the power of the objective lens times the power of the ocular lens. And you can see that for our microscopes in the microbiology lab, all of our ocular lens have 10X magnification, meaning they'll magnify 10 times. And so 10 times times four times will be a total magnification of 40 times. Any question about how you derive the total magnification? Now, our microscopes and most microscopes have a 10X ocular lens, but not all microscopes have 
a 10x ocular lens. Some microscopes have a different lens and uh, the most expensive microscopes you could have would have a 20x ocular lens. And so the highest magnification our microscopes can do is 100x times 10 or 1,000 times. But the best magnification you can get from the best microscopes, which we at Clark College do not have, and that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, uh, would be that it can magnify 2,000 times. Any question about any of that? All right, the depth of field is how much of the object that you're looking at that you can see, hopefully you can see this, three dimensions. And the 4X lens has the deepest depth of field, meaning with an object, you might be able to see the top of the object and the bottom of the object in the microscope in your depth of field. As you go up in power, you'll see less and less of the object. Like with the 10X lens, objective lens, you might see half of the object in the depth of field. And to focus on the other part of the object, you'd have to uh, find focus and focus on it. And then as you go up in power, you'll have less of the object you see until you get the 100x objective, in which case what all you're seeing is a plane of the object under the microscope. Although you could find focus on the top or find focus on the bottom of the object. But the point is you'd have to change your focusing to see different points of the object because the 100x lens has a very narrow depth of field. Any question about that? All right, the field of view is how much area you can see under the microscope. The largest field of view is the 4X lens where you can see, uh, well, the largest area under the microscope. So you might be able to see a very large object like a flea. You might be able to see the entire flea under the 4X lens. But when you go up to the 10X microscope, you'd see less of the object because the field of view is smaller. And so you might see, I don't know, something like around a half of the flea under the 10X microscope. And then when you go up to the 40X lens, you'd see even smaller, only a portion of the flea. And then with the 100X lens, you would only see a tiny portion of the flea. Maybe you'd see the eye or less than the eye of the flea. So the field of view of the 100X lens is very small, the smallest field of view. And then the 4X lens has the largest field of view. And then that means under the comments that the 4X lens is the easiest lens to use because you have the largest depth of field and the largest field of view. Whereas the 100X lens is the hardest to use because you have the narrowest depth of field you have to focus directly on what you want to see. And it has the smallest field of view. Any question about any of that? You should also note that all images are not only magnified, but they're also inverted and reversed. So if we were to see the letter E right there under the microscope, the E wouldn't appear like that. It would appear like that. Any questions? All right, there are different ways of adjusting the light 
on the microscope. You can change the amount of light coming from the light intensity knob, which I would call the rheostat, or you could also change the amount of light coming through by adjusting the iris diaphragm. Surprisingly, the iris diaphragm is the most important way of comparing, uh, not comparing, of changing the amount of light by just opening or closing down the iris diaphragm, you will allow either more or less light to come through and then to be collected by the uh, objective lens. Most importantly though, the iris diaphragm affects the contrast of the specimen against its background. To get the best contrast, you want to have the iris diaphragm fairly open and equal to uh, making the cone of light equal to the field of view of the objective lens. And that's why the 4X lens has the iris diaphragm fairly open. As you go up in power, you then want to shut down the iris diaphragm. If you do not shut down the iris diaphragm, you would have uh, a harder time seeing your object because it will not have the best contrast of the object against its background. And when I mean its background, I'm talking about how well the object stands against the slide, okay? And so you want to have the object stand out as best you can from its slide. And an important way of doing that is shutting or opening the iris diaphragm. And right there it says the iris diaphragm is the most important tool in adjusting the light. Some tips for focusing. When you first use the microscope, you should use the 4X objective lens. The reason being is it can see the object in the greatest depth of field and it can see the largest field of view. So if your object is off on the side, you will be able to see it with the 4X lens, but you would not be able to see it with the 10X lens unless you move the object into the middle of your field of view. Any question about any of that? All right, go ahead and read through the microscope. Use the, how to use the microscope. Use the course focus adjustment knob to slowly raise the stage to bring the object into focus. And we're only talking about course focus then move the object into the middle of the field of view and then carefully focus on the object with the fine focus adjustment knob. So first use the coarse focus knob and then the fine focus knob. Once you're done, you can then make sure your object is in your center of your field of view. You can then move the lens to the 10X objective lens. If your object is not in the center of your field of view, you may not have it in the field of view for the 10x lens because its field of view is smaller. That's why we move the object to the center of the field of view or you increase the power of the objective lens. Once you um, switch lenses, you should never use the course focus knob. So you never use the course focus knob unless you're only working with the 4X objective. All additional focusing should only be done with the fine focus knob. And why that's the case is because our 
objective lenses are in parafocal vision. That means that when you switch from one objective lens to the other, they should be in focus or in very close focus. So all you have to do is finally focus a little bit. Okay, any question about that? Uh, if ever you use the course focus knob, you will ruin the parafocal vision. And then instead of trying to focus with the higher power lens, go back to the 4X lens and refocus with the 4X lens. All right, then you repeat step nine every time you switch from one objective to the other, meaning every time you switch to a higher power uh, objective lens, make sure the object you're viewing is in your center of your field of view, and make sure it's finely focused, and then move up to the next higher objective lens. Now with the 100X objective lens, you should know that it only works, at least only well, when you use oil on the 100X objective lens. That's why it's called the oil immersion lens. Uh, it does work without oil, but it doesn't work any better than the 40X lens without oil. So there's no reason to use the 100X lens unless you're gonna use oil. Uh, why oil works better is that oil has the same refractive index as glass, and this allows more light to be gathered by the objective lens. This greatly increases the resolution and the clarity of the image if you use oil. And do I have any pictures of that? I think we'll talk about that in the lecture because I don't have that in here. So we'll talk about why oil increases the resolution and clarity of the image, okay? Whenever you use oil on the microscope, you should know that you have to remove that oil from the objective lens. And you should only use lens paper or perhaps lens, clen lens cleaner and lens paper. Uh, we don't give students anything else, but you could use a special cloth, uh, which is a, a cloth for cleaning the lens. We don't even have any, it's more expensive than the paper. And then you'd have to throw it away once you're done using it. You could also use chem wipes on the ocular lenses. And generally we don't have students, uh, not chem wipes, uh, sorry. What is that called? The Q-tip, the cotton swab. You could use those on the ocular lens. Uh, we don't give that for students. We generally clean the ocular lenses. And we don't even usually give students the lens cleaner. All right, any questions about that? So whenever you use oil, you gotta clean it and it'll always get on the 100X lens. You should also check to see if there's any oil on the 40X lens if you're using oil, because if you use oil on the 100X lens and then you rotate the 40X lens around, the 40X lens will go through the oil and pick up oil on it, okay? Any question about that? So whenever you're cleaning the microscope, you should clean the 100X lens and check the 40X lens to see if it has oil. If it has oil on it, you should remove the oil with lens paper. All right, I'll read you, let you read through it, some troubleshooting on your own. For the activities today, you're not gonna perform any of the activity with the microscope before the table has been filled in for you. However, you will be expected to know the information 
contained in the table and sort of how to use the formula. I'm not going to test you on using the formula, but you should be able to know how to measure an object. And the formula tells you how to do that, but I'm not going to test you on the formula. Uh, there's the formula. We're getting the diameter of the field of view of an objective, whatever it is, 4x, 10x, uh, 40x, or 100x. You take the diameter of the field of view, and that you can measure uh, times the 4x objective times the magnification of the scanning objective divided by the magnification of the objective lens. And you need to use this table for getting the sizes of things. Uh, for the 4x objective, this is the name of the lens here, the 4x objective lens, 4x, the diameter of the field of view that you can see under this lens, under the microscope, is 4.5 millimeters. Well, that would be 4,500 micrometers. And for the 10x objective lens, you can see 1.8 millimeters or 1,800 micrometers. For the 40x lens, you can see uh, 0 0.45 millimeters under the uh, microscope. And for the 100x lens, you can see 0 0.18 millimeters. And yes, these two are less than one millimeter. Using this information, you can then derive the size of something. We'll talk about that. Uh, you need to know this information because it can give you the diameter of the uh, size of something that you're looking at. Like, for example, if you're using the 10x lens and the object fills up the entire field of view, you know that the object is 1.8 millimeters, right? Right? That's yes or no? Yes. OK, great. And if the object were to be filling up half of the field of view of the 10x lens, what would be its diameter? Come on, if you can't do that in your head, you should be able to get out a calculator and do it. If it fills up half of the field of view of the 10x lens, and the 10x lens field fills up uh, 1.8 millimeters, how big is the object? 900 micrometers? Yeah, 900 micrometers or, or uh, 0 0.9 millimeters. All right, so that allows you to determine the size of the object that you are viewing. You just measure the, the uh, size of the field of view, and we're giving it to you in the table here. And then use this for your estimate, depending on the size of your object. And so if it's... Um, Let's go ahead and use this one here. If it's filling up only one one hundredth of your field of view, then it would be one one hundredth, 180 micrometers. And that would be the size would be 1.8 micrometers. And that's how you determine the size of an object under the microscope. So you're not going to be doing this activity, but you will be doing a virtual exercise, completing the laboratory exercise at the end of this document. You are expected to know and understand the material in the exercise. You should then read through this material. It tells you how to use a microscope if you're directly using a microscope. Uh, you do not need to uh, read through making a mount, wet mount. 
because we're not going to perform this activity and you're not going to be tested on it. So activity three is just there for your own general information. And uh, I guess that's it, all right? You're not going to be handling a real microscope, but you're expected to know how to correctly store a microscope. So go ahead and read here how to use a microscope, uh, maintain a microscope, and then store a microscope. And uh, this statement is not relevant for online courses, so there's not going to be any penalty for inappropriately handling a microscope. You should know the different terms of this lab. That's got a space in there. Come on. Ah, boy, that's not working well. Don't need to look at the references. Uh, the laboratory exercises. Let's go ahead and go to the worksheet. And then I'll briefly talk about the worksheet. So view the following video clips on how to use and focus with a microscope. This is, uh, both of these are YouTube uh, movies. And then using oil on the microscope, how to use oil, view that movie there. And then practice your microscopy skills by using this virtual uh, link to a virtual microscope. And this takes a little while to load. So let's let it load. It's taking a little longer than I want. Uh, I'll come back to this. Let's go ahead and move on. So practice naming the parts of a microscope. And this opens a link to a game. And I'll come back to that one too, because I don't want two windows open. That'll only slow down this one. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, and then fill in the blanks to the worksheet here with the correct answer. And then in number two, uh, you're gonna actually measure something. And instead of drawing it, I've changed it. So uh, we have a bacterial cell, which is two micrometers in diameter. Uh, state how many cells can fit across the circle, which is showing you the view of the oil immersion lens. And how you get that is you use this table above in the lab module. So what is the measurement of the field of view for the oil immersion lens? Use that as your measurement, and then come back to this question and answer it. And I should state something that I haven't done since the first lesson. When I'm grading a paper for the first time, you will either get a perfect score, which will be either 2.5 for labs 0 and uh, 0, 0 and 0, 1, or for all the other labs, it will be a five, and that's a perfect score. Or you'll get a grade of 0 0.1. So no, 0 0.01, sorry. And uh, that is to tell me that uh, uh, you may resubmit your answers. And then I'll go back over that paper and regrade it. Okay, and in fact, if you don't re-submit answers, I will grade your paper on what you missed in the first grading and then give you the score there. So on the first grading, 
your score will either be a perfect score or you'll get 0 0.01. Any question about that? Do you ever grade it more than once? Like after I the resubmission? I grade the lab twice. My philosophy of the lab is it is a learning exercise. So I will grade it the first time and I won't tell you the answers the first time, but I will tell you which questions are wrong. And then you can go and resubmit your lab, correcting the answers to those that I've told you that are wrong. Any question about that? And then the second time, I will grade the lab for your real grade, and that one can't be finalized, meaning that is the final part. Generally, I will get the first grading done within a week of your submitting it, usually within a few days of grading it. And then I will give you, usually until the next weekend, to resubmit the labs. So for your lab zero, zero and zero, 01, if you didn't get a perfect score, you can resubmit it until this Saturday. OK? All right, any questions about that? All right, let's go take a look at these two links. First, the virtual microscope. It's right here. There it is there. I think you click on the microscope, which I should tell you. Hmm, what's not working here? Let's scroll down. Oh, you need to explore first. You can click on those different things and then different things will come up. Now you click on the microscope, but before you do that, we need to put a slide on, and I'm gonna turn this down because that click was pretty loud. And what is this at? Oh, there it is. Let's go right there. I'll put it at 10. So open up that, and we're just gonna look at a sample slide. I'll go ahead and look at the main menu. Oh, um, for the plant slide, onion root slide. So it's got an onion root slide. And now we're looking at the object under the microscope. And you notice how blurry that is? That's because we have to focus on it. So let's of course focus on it. So this is like using a microscope and just get it fairly good someplace around here. That's a little blurry, so let's come back. Someplace around here. And now let's find focus. What do I wanna focus on? Maybe that dot there. Get it as clear as I can, that looks pretty clear. And then we can go up to the 10X lens. You may need to find focus. And actually these, these right here look pretty in focus, but those look out of focus, but I'll focus right there on that one. Actually, let's see. I don't see any chromosomes yet. Let me move up and find focus. Well, about right there is, Really good there. Let's go to the 40X lens. Hmm, I don't see any uh, chromosomes yet. Why am I not seeing chromosomes here? There won't be many, but if we could move this around. Oh, here we go. There we go, there's some chromosomes. Now I wanna focus on the chromosomes. And right there is pretty good. And then we can go up to the 100X lens, add oil immersion. So it tells you what to do here. This is the oil probably here. And then we add the oil here and fine focus again. It looks like I didn't have that 
I'm a good push worker. So let me see more light. Oh, I'm not on my chromosome. That's why it's kind of blurry. There it is there. I was focusing on that. So that's pretty good. Right around there, I'd say is the best for the blue. And then we end this. How do I end that? Remove slide. And it says we need to then clean the microscope. So get some lens paper. That's that right there. And there they're cleaning the lens. And then they're putting away the slide. So that's how you use this. Any questions on the virtual microscope? Just play around with it from the main menu. There are different uh, things you can do. The guide that's on using it, uh, learning about the microscope. Uh, the main one I want you to do is do the exploring, but you can also test yourself. Care on usage, calculating. Let's go to terminology. A specific material is used exclusively with the 100X or higher objective lens, typically at 10,000 total power. Uh, so what are they asking? Special material at the 100X Select the cross term. Well, it's not tension adjustment. I would say it's probably immersion oil because it's only used on the 100X lens. Correct. All right, I got that right. That question was a little funny to me. So, anyways, you could look on that. And let's go ahead and close this. Any questions about that? Now let's take a look at the game. This too takes a little bit to open. Come on. So just to clarify, um, on the circle that you showed us, uh, and like from the screen that you showed us, so we have to like draw like what it, it would look like if it were to be with the microscope. No, the question asks how many cells, if it, the cell is two millimeters across, how many cells can you put across from one edge to another, meaning if you're stacking them? If they're two micrometers in diameter, how many of them can you put across the field of view? Okay? Okay. All right. So in this, it tells you what to do here. So read that there and then press play. That's this button here. Don't hit these, it'll encourage you to download something and you don't wanna download that. So it's asking for where is the arm of the microscope? So that's right here. So click on that blue dot. Now it's asking for the resolving nose piece. The body tube. Uh, that's a part of the microscope we don't ask you for. I think it's that one. The power switch. Uh, I don't see it. Let me come down here. Probably 14. No, it's right here. Okay. And then you can quit and it tell you what your score is. It's 27% done. And how would I do? I missed zero. So I got 15 points. Or else I got zero points and I missed it. It might be because I ended it, it gave me zero points. All right, yeah, it gave me zero points because I didn't finish. All right, you can go on and do the game and this will just help you identify the different parts of the microscope. Any questions about that? Both of these links take a little while for uh, the page to download. So give it time, especially if you have a slow internet connection. Uh, other than that, that's it for the lab. Go ahead and start working on the lab. 
I will be here until eight o'clock to answer questions for you, but I may walk away from my lab, uh, meaning from my station here and get something to eat, but just stick around. I'll be back within a few minutes and then you can answer your question. Are there any questions? If not, go ahead and get started on the lab. I'm gonna stop the share and stop the recording.